Ali ibn Abi Talib is saying, we can solve world hunger if people gave in the path of Allah. We would solve world hunger. I was walking around in the bazaar, ironically. I was walking around. And I walked by some of the booths like Igna Relief and Islamic Relief and Helping Ants. And this booth that was talking about the situation in Mali. He told me 25,000 Muslims a year are leaving Islam for Christianity because they need a piece of bread. Because they need antibiotics for their baby that is dying in their arms. That's on us people. That's on us who just can't get enough. I don't mean for this to be a guilt trip, but I, I have to tell you. Spiritually, we are bankrupting ourselves. Family-wise, we are destroying ourselves. Everyone's heard this statistic. And realize when I talk about these U.S. statistics, we're not immune to this. We're, we live here. You don't think we're affected by where we live? If you step out into the heat, you're going to sweat. If you step out into the gold, you're going to shiver. If this is going on all around us, you don't think we're affected by this? If we think this is a kufar problem, then we have no idea what we're talking about. This is in our homes. This is within our homes. We're not able to give sadaqah and charity because we always got our backs up against the wall. My mom and my dad, they are my role models, they're my heroes. We had a very simple rule, if we can't afford it, we don't buy it. That's just how we roll. If you can't afford it, we don't buy it. And the consequence of that was, sadaqah was like a lifestyle. It was systematic, it wasn't spur of the moment. I didn't need to be emotionally blackmailed. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. But I didn't need to be emotionally blackmailed, like if you love your mother, you will give $5,000. It's like, oh God, mom, are you here? No, all right, forget this, right? <laughs> so I didn't need to be emotionally blackmailed to give sadaqah, it was the lifestyle. I was walking by one of the booths downstairs and they were talking about the orphan sponsorship program and I said, let me share a little story with you. There was a simple rule in our house that when you started earning money because you didn't live beyond your means so there was no issue about a credit card and all that kind of nonsense and buying things you didn't need. It was a very simple rule. When you got your first paycheck, you got your first job, you signed up for an, an orphan sponsorship program and every month you sponsored an orphan. And I was telling them that Alhamdulillah, now today, for 18 years, I've been in, on an orphan sponsorship program. My younger sister, when she first started teaching, she got her first paycheck from the school, sign up orphan sponsorship program. My younger brother who's sitting there somewhere, when he got his first paycheck, orphan sponsorship program. That's how it works. Sadaqah becomes a part of your life.